Hi, glad you could join me in my kitchen. I want to show you how to make some really good green beans. Everybody's probably starting to look at seed calendars now. These are really hard to find unless you live near an ethnic grocer or an ethnic farmer's market. Um, where I am, I only know of one store that has them in the Toledo, Ohio area, the Middle East market. They're grown in the south in the winter for us, and then as the season ends there, there's about a two-week lull when fresh figs come into season, and these are no longer around, but then they come back in the late summer. Having said that, this is sort of like a, a stringless Roma bean, Johnny Seeds has two beans that grow like this that are stringless and they're really flavorful. I think they're absolutely wonderful. They're worth seeking out for sure. I think Johnny Seeds, one of them is a nor'easter and I can't remember the name of the other one, but you know, a flat Italian bean. Having said that, what I did when I got these was I took the um, ends off the, one, the bottom end doesn't necessarily have to come off. I think that's fine on it. But I did take the vine end off. Now what I'm going to do is snap these into about three pieces because what these are going to do, I'm going to steam them first. They take a little bit longer to cook than your normal green bean, but when they're cooked, about 90% done and then drained. Then we're gonna finish them in a really flavorful but simple tomato sauce. Some really good tomatoes. I personally like these Laval tomatoes or any kind of a San Marzano, but the San Marzano is, should be a DOP. And if it's not, we have a company in Northwest Ohio, Di Fratelli, that has excellent tomatoes and so either a De Fratelli, and actually they're around, I think they, I know they're east of the Mississippi. I've seen them down in Florida too, but uh, it's a really nice tomato. It's not acidic. A tomato in a can, you sort of get what you pay for. You know, the really inexpensive tomatoes are usually packed in water and they don't have any flavor and they're very acidic. So go the extra mile and get some good tomatoes. You'll be glad you did. And what we're going to do is take the tomatoes. Well, first we're going to saute some onion and garlic, quite a bit of onion and garlic. Add the tomatoes. Well, Italians do like to add a pinch of sugar. And I like to add a pinch of oregano or marjoram. And cook that a little bit. Then add the green beans and finish stewing the green beans in the quick tomato sauce. Now, to add a pinch of crushed red pepper, oh, you could do that. I kind of like that too. Or you can add some sweet marjoram. That's really good. Now, as I'm breaking these, which is a good thing to be doing for sure, as I'm breaking them, I'm also checking for if these have any string at all. So far, I haven't found any, but if, you, if these have any string in them, because there's nothing worse than eating green bean and then having the string, like, you know, then what do you do with it politely? Okay, so if, you, if there is a string in these, you'll know it and you'll be able to pull it off or throw it out or, you know, whatever. But so far, so good. And then after these are done, they're going to go in this pot. I don't like to salt the water on the green beans until, you know, the very end. But actually, we'll do it in the tomatoes because... These beans, because they're a little larger, I think that it toughens the beans just a little bit. I think just plain boiling water and about probably 20 minutes in the pot should do it. We'll test them after that. Ought to bring these up to a nice tender state where then they can go on another stewing process with the tomatoes for, well, a half hour is better. The longer, the better. And up to a couple hours is really good. Um, you can add a touch of curry if you wanted to the tomato. But really, less is more if you're using a good tomato. You don't need that much in it. Just giving you some ideas for some 
other flavor directions you can go with it. Anyway, I'll put these right into, and you want to bring the, the water to a boil first too. I'm going to put these in there, and I want this water to cover the beans, uh, not just steaming them from the bottom. And so, in they go. So I'm going to cover these up. We'll steam them for about 20 minutes, and I'll see you in 20 when they're done. And we drain them, and then we'll do a quick tomato sauce. All right, we're back. Now, the green beans are cooked till crisp tender, but more to tender than crisp. The pan is still hot, so what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of olive oil to the bottom of the pan. Then, we're gonna put in these chopped onions. You don't have to be really careful with the onions on how chopped, mince, whatever. Probably about a quarter inch cut. And they're gonna go on the bottom of the pan. Then, we're going to add some pressed garlic. I find the garlic press really easy. I just love it. Uh, it doesn't trash the cutting board. It's really hard to get garlic, the garlic flavor out of the cutting board. So if you're gonna roll pastry or anything like that where you don't want garlic, it's kind of hard to do. But anyway, the garlic press, it's clean, it's easy, it's fast. What you do is just stick the, I like the clean garlic clove, though some say you can put it on with the skin in it. Put it in, press it, scrape the bottom off. What you do to clean it is just smash it, pull the paper coat off. I do like to take off that little root end, that's gone. And then the little covering's gone. Okay, so now the last piece is in there. Now the reason I'm putting the garlic on top of the onions is I don't want it to burn. The, since the onions have a pretty decent water content, it will steam them first, and whereas on the bottom they burn first. Then I'm gonna take this, I don't like to waste anything, by using the little tool that they gave me with this garlic press, I can push what didn't go through the press out and then put that in a pot. I waste nothing. So we're going to stir this around and let that brown a little bit. Want to get some flavor in the onions. Okay, so we've got some flavor going. It smells heavenly in here. You like the smell of garlic. Then let's talk about the tomato. I really, really, really like San Marzano tomatoes. If it's a San Marzano, it will say DOP, which is denomination, um, the origin of production, so that you know that these are grown in the San Marzano region. Yes, California grows San Marzano. A lot of people grow San Marzano tomatoes, but they're not the same as being grown in the San Marzano region. Now this is a company that I've been, I've been working with for a long time. I get them from a distributor in Detroit called Laval, and God, these are such great tomatoes. Now you can see, I need to turn this down a little bit. You can see a lot of tomatoes are packed in water, and you can see that these are packed in juice. You can eat these, I like to buy them whole also, by the way, and you can see the juice is nice and thick. I think they're just the best tomato. You can eat them whole right out of the can. So I'm going to add, the onions have a nice color on them. Now I'm adding the tomato to the pot. I don't want to waste any of this because, God, they're just such great tomatoes. I also will scrape the can out. A lot of times if I'm making tomato sauce or beef, anything, any kind of chicken stew, whatever I'm using these tomatoes for, 
a lot of times I'll put a little liquid in the can and rinse it out just to make sure I get it all. And having said that, if you can't find San Marzano's or if they're really pricey where you live, Di Fratelli is in a lot of grocery stores east of the Mississippi and that's a good tomato to buy too. So these, the tomatoes, the whole tomatoes are in the pot and I'm just using this spoon to break them up. They will break up on their own once you keep cooking them. Then to this, I'm also gonna add a pinch of cinnamon. And it's just enough to say, oh, what is that? But we're not making cinnamon toast here. Then we're also going to add some fresh cracked pepper. Actually, I like pepper, so it's gonna get quite a bit of that. And we're gonna add, depending on how much salt you like, a pinch of salt. I like the kosher salt. And we're going to stir this up and let it cook for a little bit, and then the green beans are gonna go in this pot. You know, I, when I was a young girl, I went to Italy, and a friend of ours lived in Frascati, and his neighbors were the family that owned the Frascati vineyards. So we had dinner between the two places because you eat in all the time because, and it was such wonderful food, but it always amazed me at such a young girl how the Italians can use so few ingredients and how everything can be so flavorful. And then, you know, through my career in cooking, well, it's all about the ingredients, which I'm all about. I love using quality ingredients. It doesn't take a lot, but the ones you use should be good to get a really good flavor out of whatever you're cooking. Well, the green beans have stewed in the pot with the tomato and the onion and the garlic and the pinch of cinnamon, and I did salt and pepper them slightly. They stewed for about a half hour. Actually, I let them go for 45 minutes, but it doesn't really make any difference because the longer the better, they just absorb more flavor. I took them out of the pot, and oh my God, they are so good, you wouldn't believe it. It really didn't change the texture of them too much. That's why I cooked them to crisp tender, but more to the tender side. And then I'm serving them on the side of this chuck roast that you can find on my uh, cooking videos that came out excellent. The chuck roast, has a puree of onion sauce on it, and it has a hint of orange in it, which complements the green beans and the chuck roast. When you're looking through seed catalogs, as is time of the year right now, take a look. There's Seeds of Italy that has wonderful Italian pole beans, yellow and green, that are stringless, and Johnny Seeds, and those are the two that I know. And also, I think Landreth Seed also has some wonderful, um, I want to say they're, it's a pole bean, it is a pole bean, and they're long and stringless. Stringless is the key. There's also Kentucky Wonder beans, but I find a lot of strings in Kentucky Wonders, so I sort of steer away from them because I just can't stand the strings. But anyway, I hope you try these because if you don't have these beans, they're worth seeking out, and if nothing else, plant some in your garden. I'm going to try it again, and hopefully my woodchucks won't eat them all. We'll see how that goes. I'll make sure to make a video after the summer, and we'll see what I end up with. So thanks for joining me. I'm Diane Rogers. I have a cookbook out at on Amazon, Sid and Diane's Incredible Recipes from our incredible restaurant. Thanks for joining me again.